Hello, this is the Radical Reviewer, taking a look at Surviving on the Streets, How to Go Down Without Going Out, by Ace Backwards, Loom Pan Express, 2002. The key idea of this text is to lay out the tips, the tricks, the do's and the don'ts, as well as positive and negative misconceptions about homelessness. Ace Backwards' knowledge about the subject comes from his three personal stints with homelessness, first in San Diego in 1978, then in Eureka and Attica in 1995, and finally in Berkeley in 1997. Although these dates may seem far in the past, busking, panhandling, dumpster diving, scavenging, sleeping in doorways, sleeping in the woods, and living out of a backpack don't seem to change very much over time. Well, let's take a look at the text in depth. The text consists of 25 chapters broken into four parts. Part 1 is essentially the brick and mortar stuff about homelessness. It has chapter titles like Chapter 2, Your Stuff, or Chapter 5, How to Deal with the Cold and Rain. Many chapters break down into numbered subsections. For example, Chapter 2 breaks down a list of eight things that you should make sure to have. Sleeping bag, matting, a backpack, toiletries, clothes, shoes, bags, miscellaneous. And there are little paragraphs explaining each one. Part 2 deals with what you will likely be doing with your time as a homeless person. This section has titles like Chapter 12, Food, Eating Low Off the Hog, or Chapter 14, Washing Up. Most chapters have various subsections either numbered, like the Stuffs chapter, or categorized, such as Chapter 9, dealing with the cops and being dealt with by the cops, which has sections like Things That Will Draw Cop Heat, The Criminalization of the Homeless, You're Under Arrest, and the legal loop. Part 3 is about the causes and struggles of homelessness, with chapters like Chapter 19, Why Homeless, Why Now, and Chapter 21, Counterculture Casualties. And finally, Part 4 is about the psychological struggle with homelessness and how to recover from these struggles, with chapter titles like 23, Getting Off the Streets, and Chapter 24, Psychological Skid Rose. Part 3 and 4 are somewhat similar. If Part 1 and 2 was the physical survival guide of what you want to have and how to eat, then part three and four are about psychological survival and looking at misconceptions of homelessness. Part three and four look at various types of homelessness, cliques I guess you could say, and also struggles within homelessness such as drugs and violence. And this is where Ace Backwards gives personal profiles of people he's known well or simply personal stories of his own life. The whole book is full of real-life anecdotes, but Part 3 and 4 have some of the most in-depth, intense, and heartbreaking and gut-wrenching stories. To give an example of the witty writing and the intense anecdotes, here is an example from Chapter 2 about getting food. Here, Ace Backwards has explained table scoring, which is the act of casually entering a restaurant to eat paid-for leftover food. He says, Another time, I was sitting in the same restaurant eating a table-scored salad when this punk kid came in and started circling around the place looking for food. I happened to have two plates in front of me, and he seemed pretty discreet, so I silently gestured to him that he could have one. He gratefully took the plate and walked out the door with it. Then he sat down on the sidewalk across the street in clear view of everyone in the restaurant, mistake number one, and started happily munching down his meal. Then he realized he forgot to get a fork, so he marched back into the restaurant and grabbed one from the silverware tray at the counter, mistake number two, and went back outside to finish his meal. A few minutes later, two cops came in and conferred with the owner in the back. Then they went outside and confronted the kid and started writing him up a $120 ticket for stealing food. I'm watching this scene unfolding from my window seat, eating my own table scored meal, when I noticed to my horror that the punk kid is pointing to me and saying something to the cops. He's trying to get out of it by snitching me off, mistake number three. The cops came in and said to me, that kid said the plate of food was yours and you said he could take it. I don't know anything about that, I said. I'm just sitting here eating my lunch. The cops went back outside and wrote up the kid a ticket, which is a drag. But the weirdest thing was the whole time this was going down, I'm sitting there gobbling down my own stolen meal, right in front of the cops, the owner, and the world. As an added bonus, the book ends with lists of recommended books with titles such as The Art and Science of Dumpster Diving and The Hitchhiker's Handbook. The text essentially keeps following a pattern like this. 
chapter title with a funny comic strip related to the topic, subsections that break down the topic in a homelessness handbook sort of way, and peppered with outlandish and witty anecdotes to explain how the knowledge was gained and how the tips and tricks have played out in real life experiences. To finish my analysis, I want to explain how this text changed how I think. First, one criticism of the work would be that Ace Backwards' experiences were in the 80s and mid-90s. Although I had said in the beginning that his tips and tricks are still reasonable because life on the streets hasn't changed much over the years, however, his views on topics such as homosexuality, racism, etc. are a little bit dated and even somewhat offensive by today's standards. He is unapologetic in his views, and they're based up on and backed up by his lived experience, but it's something to keep in mind. That said, there is enough here for anyone to enjoy. The anecdotes, the outlandish situations, the survival guidiness of it, the humor is pretty good too, with lines like, On the streets you meet countless people trying to live out the romanticized media drug myths of their youth. You got the Keith Richard junkie wannabes, the Jerry Garcia acid head wannabes, the Sly Stone crackhead wannabes, the Charles Bukowski alcoholic wannabes, the Hunter S. Thompson gobble down everything you can get your full hands on wannabes, on and on it goes. As I said earlier, the comic strips at the beginning of each chapter are pretty funny too. Here's just a few examples. Although the hard life on the street is a rare experience which most people can luckily avoid, a layoff, an accident, a ticket, a bad investment, roommates moving out or losing their jobs, landlords facing foreclosure, bills piling up. Many things in our day-to-day -day can push anyone from their current living situation to a stint with a family member, couch surfing, staying in a hotel, or even living in your car. Not everyone has these benefits to fall back on. Ace Backwards explains many of the joys and benefits of life on the street without making it out to be some noble, savage, primitivism utopia. He also unapologetically explains the drawbacks and the scary, intense situations that come with life on the streets, all wrapped up with witty and intense anecdotes. The text is about half handbook of useful information and half stories that flesh out the experiences in a real way. For those people who might face living on the streets, for young adults whose housing situation is more unstable than most, for people who care about the issues of homelessness and want a more concrete, hands-on understanding of it, for those interested in modern folk punk and gypsy music scenes and the lifestyles that might go along with that, and for those who are simply interested in understanding what living on the streets is like, I recommend reading this book. If you're interested in radical theory, looking for a book recommendation or whatever, you can get your radical book reviews here with the Radical Reviewer. Thanks for watching.